For centuries, Irish men driven by need have signed up to fight in foreign armies. But did you know that on one occasion, a thousand and more volunteered to fight in the Pope's army? If you've ever been to Rome, you've probably seen the Vittorio Emanuele monument, known locally as the Wedding Cake. It was built in memory of the king under whom Italy was united in 1861. Before that point, the Italian peninsula was by no means one united country. It was a patchwork of different jurisdictions. Throughout the middle of the 19th century, this patchwork was slowly being shaped into one. But the Papal States were holding out this band of territory across Italy governed by the Pope. Up to this point, Popes had always been able to call on the help of various political powers to protect their independence. But this time, it wasn't really in the interest of any major power to defend the Papal States. And so they lay quite vulnerable. Pope Pius IX didn't have a large army at his disposal, but there was one last throw of the dice available to him. He called on individual Catholic men throughout the world to make the journey to Italy and to join an army that would defend the Papal States. In Rome and in Ireland, the network of Irishmen led the way in promoting this appeal in Ireland. Count Charles MacDonald, who had served in the Austrian army, Major Miles O'Reilly, a former British soldier, Father Joseph Malouli, a Dominican based in Rome, and Alexander Sullivan, editor of the Nation newspaper. Plans were hatched to form an Irish brigade in the Pope's army, the Battalion of St. Patrick. Fundraising began first, but then serious recruitment took place in Ireland in early 1860, leading to some 1,400 men leaving Ireland to join the Papal army. What's fascinating about these men is that they don't seem to have been driven by need for the most part. Many of them had stable employment as doctors, laborers, lawyers, British soldiers and policemen. Some 20 members of the Royal Irish Constabulary in Cork gave up their posts to travel to Italy, leaving behind a comfortable job. Everything about these men suggests that they were motivated by national ideals and personal faith. One of the recruits explained simply, I am willing to die for the faith of my fatherland. They must have known, if they had any understanding of the situation, that there was really little chance of success. One of the men who signed up for this adventure was 20-year-old Miles Kyo, brought up in this very house behind me in Lachlan Bridge, County Carlow. We don't know exactly what motivated him, but we know that he ended up in the Irish Brigade and travelled to Italy with hundreds of others, making their way there in small groups of 20 or 30. Now the journey wasn't all plain sailing for these papal soldiers. One group that was staying over in Hull had an orange band gathered outside their hotel playing anti-Catholic tunes all night. When the soldiers arrived in Vienna, they found that English spies were buying them alcohol and trying to get them to fight one another. When they arrived in the Papal States, the Irish recruits were surely excited to be gathering with volunteers from Poland, France, Belgium and so on. But they found the facilities there deeply disappointing. There weren't even any uniforms for the Irish Brigade. They had been promised special green uniforms, but there were none. And there was little food to go around. One group of teenagers from Kerry simply refused to eat the lettuce that was given to them. Why would they eat raw cabbage, as they called it? When it came to fighting though, the Irish Brigade was active in a number of conflicts, culminating in the Siege of Ancona, where the Irish were in the front line. The performance of Miles Kyo, now a second lieutenant, was singled out for particular praise by a French observer of that battle. That battle was the last hurrah of the Irish Brigade in the Papal Army. Most were taken prisoner and a small number had been wounded or killed. Most of the prisoners eventually returned home to a hero's welcome in Ireland. Banquets were laid on and speeches were given. When the remains of one of the deceased, a certain David Skehan, were brought back to Cork, his funeral drew 30,000 people. What about Miles Kyo? He actually stayed on in the Pope's army for another two years and was awarded the medal Pro Petri Sede. Then adventure called him elsewhere. He traveled to America along with a number of other Irish officers in papal service. And he was commissioned as a captain in the Union Army, fighting in over 80 battles during the Civil War, including the Battle of Gettysburg. One of his superior officers described him as 
one of the most gallant and efficient young cavalry officers I have ever known. A few years later, he joined the 7th Cavalry in the US Army with the rank of Captain under the command of General Custer, at whose side he met his end 10 years later at the Battle of Little Bighorn in Montana. His horse, Comanche, was the sole survivor of the 7th US Cavalry in that battle and became something of a folk icon with songs written about his courage. To this day, his stuffed remains are on display at the University of Kansas. It's a long way from Lachlan Bridge to Montana, but it's worth remembering how that adventure began with a call to arms in defense of the Pope, a call answered by a great crowd of big-hearted, brave Irishmen, among them young Miles Keogh. 